Well, the Reds went the distance, but they came up short in Iowa. Did a missed call in the first inning turn the field of dreams into a field of nightmares? Jeff will tell us why he thinks so. The Reds lineup is slumping and they need a spark. We will get you caught up on all of what's going on with the Reds hitters. And then Jeff and I are going to draft our all-time favorite players from the Reds onto our very own field of dreams team. We've got all that and more on today's Locked on Reds. Let's go. You are Locked on Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked on Reds with myself, Jeff Carr, and my co-host, Stephen Offenbaker. We have been lifelong Reds fans and turned an addiction into information for you here on the Locked on Reds podcast that's part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available on all platforms on today's podcast. We are going to talk about why Nick Lodolo has been the best rookie pitcher on the Reds this year. We will break down just how much of a slump this lineup has been in recently, and we will build our own dream Reds lineups with a draft. Today's episode, though, is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts, and Steve, where we're going to start is with the game last night. I want to get into Nick Lodolo's season and how he has looked. But I've got to start this off because you teased it in the cold open. We talked about this off air. There was a call in the top of the first inning that changed this game for me. And you're going to say, well, if there's a call in the top of the first inning that really changes the game, then how bad were the Reds? That's how this season has gone. If something ticks the opposite way. If something ticks toward the favor of the opponent, forget about it. The Reds don't have what it takes to bounce back right now on this roster. So that is why this is so important. With two outs, nobody on. I believe it was a one-two count on Patrick Wisdom. Nick Lodolo has a beautiful slider that cuts across the plate on the inside part in on Patrick wisdom. He tries to swing. He tries to check his swing. He comes right here with it, breaks his wrist forward. The bat is kind of pointing down the first baseline since wisdom's a righty and I'm swinging like a lefty. That's going to be a little bit confusing, but he breaks the plane. Now the ball hits him in the back foot because it's a back foot slider. Nick Lodolo knows how to throw those to righties. The first base umpire says that he checks up. And because of that missed call, that completely derails the momentum that Nick Lodolo was starting with. And it absolutely changed his start because he, the first, the leadoff batter, he throws two straight balls to, he gets them to pop up. Okay. He's working, gets a quick ground out on the second batter. I'm like, we're going to be moving and grooving here through this start. And then that one thing is enough to set him off because this is an emotionally charged environment. Steve, you cannot take that away from Nick Lodolo. Well, you're not wrong. And by the way, that was one of the worst at bat reenactments I've ever seen for our YouTube viewers. <laughs> if you saw Jeff there, that was something. Um, listen, Nick Lodolo was intermittently good and bad through this start. Um, he struck out six guys in this thing. And there were times he looked great, but there were also times he looked like a rookie. And while you are correct that that call probably did not go his way, it probably favored the Cubs. Uh, I think the fact of the matter is that Nick Lodolo showed that he is a rookie that is subject to being uh, a a victim of the jitters. Uh, We saw it in his very first start in Cincinnati uh, where he pitched with the jitters and didn't do well. And I think coming into this game on a national stage, he showed us that he's everything we think he is. And he showed us that he's going to be everything we've hoped he's going to be. But he also showed us that he's a rookie and he still needs a little bit more time to really solidify that and be that guy every pitch, every time. 
it was something that I appreciated about John Smoltz on the broadcast. He was talking a lot about how Nick Lodolo really bounced back from that first inning. The Cubs scored pretty much all of their runs in the first inning. Of course, they got one more insurance run later on against Lodolo and ended up chasing him. But he was very impressed by the different adjustments that Nick Lodolo made. And he said, that's what I need to see to know that he's going to be a good pitcher. You don't have to quote to me certain stats about him. For me to know like i watch this guy pitch i know he's going to be fine and he even talked about it with joey whenever joey was mic'd up which again mic joey up all the time like i don't know i don't know how we need to, if there's a petition or something i feel like joey Votto could be the first player announcer that there ever was and he would be amazing at it because that is so much fun when he's mic'd up but they were talking about it he's just like He's like, John, you know, this, the first couple of years you're in the major leagues, you're just trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Said, we're all talented. We all have the talent to play this game. You just have to get used to the everyday goings on of a baseball team. And once Nick Lodolo does that, he's just going to be on top of the world. And I couldn't agree more with him. You know, as just as an aside, Jeff, um, and, and we didn't touch on it and we probably should here for just a second because this game I know that it is it's a it's a marketing gimmick. I know that Major League Baseball has put a lot of time and energy into hitting us in our feels, but they did which is uncharacteristic for them, a really good job of doing it. I mean, yes. if you're a Reds fan and it didn't hit you just right in your heart when Griffey Sr. and Jr. come out and do the want to have a catch line and start playing catch. And when the players start coming out of the cornfield with Johnny Bench and Barry Larkin coming out in the 1919 uniforms. I mean, if that didn't get you, I don't know. Uh, when, that was that was something special. And when Tom to Verducci have, asked David Bell mm -hmm. about Mike Bell like that. I oh, mean, man, we, when we he were talked all about his there, brother. Right? Yeah. yeah, no when, chance. You know. All kinds of moments like that. And then Joey mic'd up. And, you know, we didn't put this in the rundown, and I'm stealing this segment, Jeff, because I heard Joey Votto say clearly that he wants the Reds to pick up his option. He didn't say those words, but I'm telling you, that's what he said. He said, I'm not done, baby. Like John I Smoltz. I want to play. He yeah. said, I want to play. It was, well, it was either Smoltz or Joe Davis. I forget. So one of them asked, you know, you, you, you're getting toward the end of your career. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I was talking with Griffey Sr. And and he was like, yeah, I played till I was 41. I probably could have played till I was 43. And Joey's like, hmm, that's interesting. Because he's telling him 2024, you better not buy me out because I'm not done yet, baby. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to hijack the segment, but <laughs> no. that was that was the, the thing that got me the most in Joey's interview uh, while he was playing the game. That and just he is yeah. so smooth and has really, really good comedic timing. And I, I just love that his personality is coming out when he said the thing of, you know, I'm just out here trying to play first base. It's, it's story time. I got nothing else to do. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I loved every I loved every minute of this Field of Dream stuff. I hope that it continues to be something that they do. I would like to see Major League Baseball find ways to do other things similar to this, maybe not quite as extravagant all the time, but I would love to see them put some more effort into some type of game like this at Williamsport during the Little League World Series. I would love to see them do something where they travel around like the old barnstorming days and have yeah. games in just odd places like Billings, Montana, as an example, go around to places with a baseball tradition and bring the game to them. I would love to see it. Yeah. And I, I think it shows at least in some capacity for a moment, major league baseball knows how to market its product because that was all about nostalgia. That was all about bringing together, you know, families and, and, and just thinking about baseball. I mean, I watched the game with my dad and, and we just sat there the whole time, just not really talking a whole lot during all the pregame stuff because we're just taking it in, you know. It's it's it is absolutely beautiful, and I think you're right. I think that's really the main thought for this game was just the aesthetics of it. It it wasn't necessarily who won and lost. Although I really wanted the Reds to win this game because I felt like for once you could really single out a regular season game. 
but even that they didn't win, like this was still a beautiful experience and getting to see those 1919 uniforms, Johnny bench, Johnny bench, that, that half inning that he got to talk, that was absolutely brilliant. And you could see it too. Cause they would show the shot of the booth every so often, Joe Davis and John Smoltz would just be sitting there smiling. Like we don't even really have to talk this half inning. Like Johnny bench has this, that and, 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 and Fergie Jenkins too. That, those two half innings were beautiful. And did you see Johnny bench dig Fergie's? ceremonial first pitch out of the dirt johnny still got it man yeah. I, I hope that the reds catchers were paying attention because we haven't seen a whole lot of that this season and it was nice to see somebody in a reds uniform actually knock one down and and come up with it it was it was nice i got the question why is johnny bench wearing the uniform too i'm like mom because the catchers are terrible this year he probably has to get ready just in case he's stretching uh. <laughs> he has to be ready to get the call. No, yeah, I, I loved every moment of that. And, you know, I hope the Reds get to participate, but I'm guessing they're probably going to move around the league a little bit more, and that's totally fine, too. Yeah, and, and listen, let's let's circle him back to, to the Reds' actual on-field performance uh, with Nick Lodolo. You know, Nick Lodolo has, has demonstrated that of the rookie pitchers this season, uh, he's been pretty much the best to this point in the season, uh, given some of the struggles and injuries that the other guys have had. Uh, I, I'm encouraged by what Lodolo has been able to do. And I think, you know, through 10 starts for the Reds, uh, he's shown us that he's just going to continue to get better and better. Uh, but we do have to talk about some other things, Jeff, coming up here in a minute. Uh, the lineup has demonstrated that uh, it's got a little bit of a struggle going on. In fact, one might even use the word slump. Uh, it has not been very healthy. But uh, before we get to talking about the health of the lineup, let me talk to you a little bit about your liver health. Uh, something else you may be unaware of is a key to sustain sustainable weight loss is through your liver. The liver is the body's metabolic furnace. It's responsible for getting rid of harmful toxins and igniting your fat-burning metabolism. Unfortunately, most of us have overworked our livers. Um, I'm not going to sip any bourbon right now. Uh, but now it's easy to rejuvenate your liver health and reignite your metabolism thanks to the Liver Health Formula by Pure Health Research. The Liver Health Formula contains eight liver-boosting super nutrients like turmeric, beet, and artichoke extract, all of which work together to wake up your sluggish liver and turn it into a toxin-flushing and fat-burning machine. No more bloated belly, no more uncontrolled, uncomfortable digestion, no more feeling tired and low on energy all the time. And best of all, liver health formula makes it easier to maintain a healthy body weight long term. As a listener of our show, you can try liver health formula risk free today and get a free bottle of curb fit with your order. Curb fit is a safe and all natural appetite suppressant, making it easy to say no to unhealthy foods. This makes it the perfect complement to liver health formula. Go to liver health, get liverhelp.com. That's get liverhelp.com slash MLB to learn more. Again, that's get liverhealth.com slash MLB to try liver health formula completely risk free and claim your free bottle of curb fit with your order. Go to get liverhelp.com slash MLB right now to get started. Coming up next week on the podcast, Jeff and I will continue to have you covered. We are going to break down this Cubs series that continues uh, with a two game set of the three game set in Cincinnati. Anyway, they're playing two more games this weekend that count towards this series. Uh, hopefully the Reds can take the next two and get another series win uh, in the division under their boat under their belt jeff and i will have you covered for that but jeff uh leading into these final two games of this series the reds lineup has not been spectacular um in fact they have been a little slumpy i know that's a dirty word when we're talking about baseball hitters but they've kind of started to slump a little bit no and, and i kind of went back because i felt it during this game there were just so many innings where the reds had guys on base in fact three of the five innings that drew smiley pitched, which by the way i thought drew smiley probably should have pitched a lot more than that but three of those five innings he had at least two dudes on base that he was pitching around and the reds just couldn't bring anybody in they were one for 12 with runners in scoring position so i was thinking how bad and how long has this been we go back to July 26th. The Reds scored 11 runs against the Marlins, and we were feeling good about life. 
But also, there were a, a couple of guys on that lineup that aren't here anymore. Still, July 26th, 11 runs. In the 16 games since July 26th, Steve, how many runs do you think they've scored a game? Um, without cheating and looking, let's say three runs a game. That's exactly right. They're averaging three runs a game. And there's been a lot of games where it's just one and two runs as well. This team as a whole, their slash line, they've been batting 223, getting on base less than 30% of the time and slugging 338. Just not good at all. The kind of lineup that no matter what your rookie pitcher's doing on the mound, they're not getting the support they need. You know, the batting average in that slash line, while not great, I don't panic over batting average anymore, just given the nature of Major League Baseball. But with that on-base percentage being below 300 and that slugging percentage being down at 338, I think that really speaks to a lot of the problem that's going on. They're not getting anybody to draw walks. They're not getting anybody to drive those guys in in the rare occasions that they do get them on base, and that's a problem. And the most consistent thing that they've done Shocker strikeout. They've almost struck out 10 times a game, 158 strikeouts in 16 games. I mean, and, and you see it a lot. I mean, uh, Aristides Aquino is still doing his thing at the plate, which granted he made a beautiful throw last night, but, um, and, and, and our dude, Jose Barrero, man, that, that, that low and array breaking ball, he cannot lay off of it. That's and that, and you're you're hitting the nail on the head and I don't know if you're doing it on purpose but you're doing it and it, start with Aristides Aquino. Um, this is a player that has no business being in the batter's box right now. Uh, I don't know other than just desperation and the fact that Nick Crawl failed to to bring in enough outfield depth and and we pretty much identified that early on. When this season started, it didn't really have much to do with the fire sale of players. Uh, there wasn't any outfield depth before that. Uh, then you've got another guy like Jose Barrero who is struggling. And I just, I don't know what it is about these guys not being able to lay off a breaking pitch low and away, but whatever's being taught in the minor leagues, it's not to lay off that pitch because these guys are wailing at it and they can't hit it. And then you see it start to have the impacts in all of the numbers you're talking about right now. The high strikeouts, the low on base percentage, the lack of slugging. You know, you can't hit it out. You can't slug it if you don't hit it. And it is a huge problem for this lineup. And they continue to have guys in this lineup that really shouldn't be in this lineup. The catcher position is another instance of having a guy batting who was not the guy you intended to get significant at bats at all. And yet here we are. Right. And the, the argument that everybody hates, I think, but I think is worth having the whole clutch gene. The Reds don't have anybody in the lineup right now with that. They don't have a guy that's Tony going. Perez is not walking through that door. <laughs> no. And honestly, Tyler Stevenson was kind of trending toward that a little bit, but I mean, he's not coming back this year. So we're waiting until next year to see that. And with that, the team as a whole over these 16 games, is hitting a measly 216 with runners in scoring. We saw last night one for 12 with runners in scoring position against the Cubbies. The Cubbies are not good, Steve. And, and even if the Reds won that game last night, the Reds would have vaulted from last in the NL Central to third in the NL Central. By the way, that's all you need to know about the last three teams in the NL Central. It's ridiculous. Whoever comes in third is likely to finish 15 games behind whoever finishes second in the Central. It's, it's just absolutely horrid but the cubs themselves are not good hitters either but they were taking advantage of some pitches over the plate last night whereas the reds weren't there there were a lot of at bats where you saw guys barely missing on stuff and yes jose barrera did have a very nice double that was the only extra base hit of the night and it was a roller down the third base line that hit the corner in the outfield like wasn't wasn't matt reynolds rbi is a double Didn't oh double yeah. So, and I was just going to, and I was going to yeah. say that, you know, we talked about, you mentioned one, one hit with runners in scoring position and that's that Matt it. Reynolds off the bench because India comes out with an injury. It's not even a guy that they felt strongly enough starting the game, uh, yep. you know, and, and Matt Reynolds has continued to excel in roles like that. He's continued to just go out and deliver when the Reds needed somebody to do that. And I was really glad for him to get that opportunity on a national stage, but yeah, that one 
it with runners in scoring position, not even a guy that started. Right. And the good news, I mean, the good news, bad news was, yes, Jonathan India had to come out. He got hit on the shin with a pitch. I can only imagine how hard that must, how bad that must feel. But it was a, they said a lower leg contusion. So it wasn't like it was a hammy thing or something like that. Cause I did notice there was an at bat, I think it was in the third inning where he struck out and he winced after he struck out. I'm like, is he just mad that he struck out or no? He looks hurt. Yeah. He, he looked uncomfortable. Yeah, that that wasn't that wasn't good for him. So it was good to see him get pulled. Which, by the way, quick sidebar: super credit to Wilson Contreras. Holy crap! That that play where he rounded second, realized he was in a bad spot, tried to turn around, and then just his ankle just buckled underneath him. I thought he had broken his ankle. I thought he torn his ACL. I thought something happened. Dude stayed in the game. Like crazy credit to him. Pitchers are tough, man. Yeah, I love it. That was that was great. Anyway, back to the Reds lineup. They have got to get better because right now this lineup is absolutely what is killing this team. You're not wrong, but I want you to start preparing yourself mentally, Jeff, for the possibility that this is just as good as they're going to get with this lineup this year. Uh, my hope <sighs> is that with the extended periods of playing time, a couple of these guys will improve. I don't expect it for Aquino. I think Barrero could get better. I think we mm -hmm. could see improvement from him as he continues to work with Zinter and maybe learns to lay off of that pitch that's breaking away from him, blowing away. Uh, if he can start sitting back on that a little bit and the pitchers have to pitch him just a little bit tighter, I think he can improve. Uh, I think that if guys like Reynolds get more playing time, uh, if... There's probably no hope for the catcher position the rest of the year. So, you know, there, there's not a lot to really expect in the area of improvement, but there still are guys to, that are going to be exciting to watch and see how they develop. I, I definitely agree. But I tell you what, this current res lineup may have limped through the Field of Dreams game, but Steve and I will put together our Field of Reds Dreams lineup. It sounded better when I wrote it. Anyway, a Field of <laughs> Dreams lineup of Reds players. We're, we're going to do that here coming up in just a moment. But first, I've got to tell you about <laughs> the wonders of BlueNile.com. Check it out today. They will help you find uh, the exact right gift, whether you're trying to celebrate a special moment or if you need that special piece to pop the question blue Nile.com is where you want to go. You can build an engagement ring of her dreams. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size and clarity, as well as setting style. You can seriously make a one of one ring that she will treasure forever. Plus blue Nile's bench jewels will then jewelers will then help you uh, figure out exactly what you're looking for in the area of a special gift. They've got all this kind of jewelry and they have an amazing sale going on right now. Their anniversary sale will help you save 40% off of all of their jewelry and then 25% off engagement rings. Check them out today at blue Nile.com that anniversary sale and the jewelry experts that will help you find exactly what you're looking for today. That's 40% off of all jewelry pieces, 25% off engagement at blue Nile.com. And, um, with the reds off today, let's take a look at a former red who is pitching for his new team, Tyler Malley is on the mound and the twins are favored on the road according to bet online against the angels in fact the twins odds to win tonight are minus 125 that's intriguing to me the angels have been hot but they've got patrick sandoval on the mound who is far more inconsistent than tyler malley ever dreamed of being and if you want to learn about your next great bet check out betonline.net they've got you covered with all of the sports that are going on major league baseball we've got preseason nfl the Bengals are playing tonight in the jungle of paycor stadium still can't get used to saying that anyway if you want to find out some great bets for the rest of the nfl preseason plus the nba futures where is kevin durant gonna go i'm sure there's a line on that it's all at betonline.net check it out on your desktop or your mobile device today and figure out what's going on with all of the daily sports trends and action bet online is where the game starts You can follow us on Twitter. Make sure 
that you're following us on Twitter because in between games, Steve and I have a lot to say about what's going on. That's at Jeff Carr with three F's and at S Offenbaker with two F's. You can also follow the show at Locked On Reds. Make sure you're following the show on YouTube and your favorite podcasting app as well. If this is your first time seeing our faces, thank you. It's very nice to see you. Somewhat. I, I can't really see you, but Yes, it's nice to see you. And if you're listening, thanks for listening. Make sure you're following the podcast on your favorite app. All right, Steve, it's time for our field of dreams. Now, the key to this is we're not telling everybody this is the best lineup possible in red history. That's a different topic. This is our favorite reds and we're going to draft that way. You know, we all don't end up with an outfield of Adam Dunn, Ryan Friel and King Griffey Jr. So as a gracious host. I will allow you to pick first. All right. A couple more uh, restrictions we have placed upon ourselves. None of the people that we are going to draft are active. They have to be it's retired no from the game. So no Joey Votto in play here. You can't draft Jonathan India or Tyler Stevenson. Uh, that's the first rule. So for me, I am going to attempt to draft a team uh, solely of players I have met. Uh, that is that is what I'm going to try and do with this. So uh, I'm so just brag. going I'm going to start <laughs> with the catcher position and work my way around. Uh, I am going to draft Johnny Bench because I have gotten to speak with him um, on more than one occasion. So uh, he's probably my biggest get in this draft of people I've met in person. Uh, so I'm going with Johnny at catcher. And so for my team too, I'm, I'm not going to limit myself to players that I've seen. I'm going to also include players that I've read about players that have intrigued me. And since we're starting a catcher, I'll follow suit. I'm picking early Ernie Lombardi. How about I say that right? Ernie Lombardi would have been the best catcher in Reds history. Had Johnny bench not come along Johnny bench, best catcher in major league baseball history. So obviously best catcher in Reds history. But when you look at Ernie Lombardi, he was a measure of consistency for the Reds for a long time. And honestly, he just kind Kind of went the same way as Johnny Bench's knees gave out on him and he just stopped being able to be a good catcher. But during his prime, there are few better than Ernie Lombardi. I, I can't argue that uh, our good buddy Cam has spent many a minute telling us about Ernie Lombardi. So, uh, yes, I, I think that's a great pick. I'm going to move right on down the first baseline. Then, Jeff, uh, we'll go to first base. But, you know, I think we'll alternate so that I'm not getting the first selection at every position. So go All ahead right. and take first base. First base for me has to be my dude who honestly, for the longest time, I said he was my favorite player until the current first baseman of the Cincinnati Reds became my favorite player. And that's Sean Casey. I've always loved Sean Casey. I know that you look at some different stats and you're going to say, oh, well, he's not the best first baseman in Reds history. He is probably just absolutely one of the most underrated Reds in the history of the franchise because he was phenomenal both in the locker room and out of the locker room. RBI machine when you needed him to be. He's my first baseman. All right. And for me, sticking with my um, attempt here to only draft players that I have met uh, for at first base, I'm going to go with Hal Morris. Hal Morris has won a World Series. He was a, a 300 hitter for a large portion of his career. I, I haven't looked. I'm, he may be actually a 300 hitter for his career. Uh, you know, two different stints with the Reds. Great guy. Met him on a couple occasions. Uh, so I'm going with him. I'm going to, I'm going to go with the lefty. He played first base. Like I played first base, uh, pretty good defensively, uh, a slap hitter, not a lot of power, but could, could hit the off fields. That's how I was when I played first base. So that's my guy. And then, uh, moving on to second base, uh, you know, in 2015 for the all-star game, Jeff, uh, during the, the home run derby before the game, I was wandering around the red hall of fame and rounded a corner and ran into this guy that I'm drafting for second base. I got a picture with him, uh, and I'm glad that I had that little moment, got to talk to him for just a second. And that is probably uh, – no, it's not probably. It's the greatest second baseman to ever play for this franchise. It's Joe Morgan. Very likely, like, the best second baseman ever. I mean, his prime – the, and everybody talks about it, whether you're a Reds fan or not. Like, if you look up Joe Morgan, if you've never done this, just just – indulge yourself really treat yourself today to go to baseballreference.com and look up joe morgan's prime a few players could touch that that was an absolute beauty so with him off the board i'm gonna go with my favorite second baseman that i ever did see and with all apologies to brandon phillips 
it's Pokey Reese. Pokey Reese was my dude. I loved watching Pokey Reese play. That glove was amazing. Sure, the bat was a little bit inconsistent, but I absolutely loved getting to watch Pokey Reese play second base. He's my dude right there. And All right, moving to shortstop. You're going to take my guy. I know you are, but go ahead. Yeah, I, I think I am because Barry is just absolutely amazing. And, and he was always one of my favorite Reds as well as being the best Reds shortstop that there ever was. So it's an easy pick for me, but Barry Larkin is my shortstop. Plus, you're talking about the middle infield of my childhood of Pokey Reese and Barry Larkin. That was a little bit of a calculated move. Well, and then I mean, if, if you take Barry Larkin off the board, uh, fortunately for me, I have been to a few autograph events so i've got i've got a deep well to reach here and if you're taking barry i'm getting the other guy and that's davy concepcion uh you know a guy that pretty much invented a whole style of play he was he was he was the model that guys like ozzy smith and barry larkin followed to play on that god-awful astro turf at bush stadium and at riverfront stadium and and learning to skip the ball and the strategic hop to the first baseman that was all davy concepcion and uh you know, many still argue that Davey should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, that's an argument and a conversation for another day, but I'm taking him. I'm going with Davey. All righty. So now we're down to the hot corner. Who you got? Oh, this is a tough one for me because um, there's a there's a choice here that <laughs> I'm not going to make. So <laughs> that being said, I'm taking Chris Sabo. It's a good call. Could yeah, Chris Sabo. I, I could see, I could see Chris Sabo being a good pick there. I'm gonna go back, and I knew you weren't gonna pick him, but again, my affinity for Reds history. Uh, honestly, that's one of my favorite things about the off season. We'll do a lot more history topics, and we'll have Cam Miller on to tell us about guys that played like a hundred years ago. I got one for you, Heine Gro. That I mean, I don't know how you get a better name than Heine Gro, but Heine Gro was actually a really good hitter back in the dead ball era. Now we're talking about average. We're not talking about a huge power hitter here, but he was a great hitter for average and a pretty good fielder too. I think is cam recalled with me at one time, but Heine Gro from the early 1900s, the palace of the fans day for the sense of old school. You're going with this. This is good. You conjuring up Got some another names. one. He's coming up in the outfield. Oh, yeah. All right. So <laughs> I, I picked first on third base. So let's jump out to left field, Jeff. What are you doing with this outfield? Left field is the easiest pick in the world for me because he's, I think if I put it, he's definitely top five, top three. I probably should have thought about this before I did this. But anyway, he's absolutely one of my most favorite Reds ever. I still have his jersey. As long as that thing isn't full of holes, I will wear it. My left fielder is Adam Dunn. I absolutely loved Adam Dunn when he played. I was not a guy that would be like, well, why are you striking out so much? All you people need to stop it with that. He was one of the best Reds that there ever was, and I'm taking him. It sounds like you have feelings about this, Jeff. <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm gonna go for left field, and I'm going to pick, again, somebody that I've met, somebody that was an MVP. And he was the MVP the year that I was born, back in 1977. That is the man, the myth, the legend, George Foster. It's a good pick. I think I uh, saw my dad had a cup with his face on it one time. That, that was pretty cool. But no, I mean, how can you not go with the guy that has the all-time single-season Reds home run record? I mean, that's a good pick. It's just I loved Adam Dunmore, so that's why I picked him. So. <clears throat> it's And then we moved to center. <laughs> And I'm glad I get to make this pick first. This worked out for me since you took my guy. I've been it up before you even say it. You, 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 <laughs> you let me have him. So I didn't get Barry, but I am getting Eric the Red. Uh, for my center fielder, I'm going with number 44, uh, who would have probably been one of the all time greats for this franchise, if not for injury, Definitely. Eric Davis. Definitely. If you don't know, go look it up. And now, you know, because literally injuries are the only thing that kept him from being probably the best. I mean, he would be up there with Frank Robinson, I think. But no, I think for center field. And again, I tease this. We're going real old school here. And this is going to throw some people because I love Ken Griffey Jr. He was one of my favorite, if not my favorite players as a kid. I, 
I just got to go with the dude that I've been learning about for the last couple of years and the personality, a guy who can take a nap in the middle of a game, Ed Roush. That's the kind of ability that I think is rare in this major league baseball. If you can take a nap in the middle of a ball game, Steve, I think you would break the internet. Did you go for bourbon and cigars with cam yesterday or something and have been talking I'm just on this history. old school did you guys reds, go man. out and not invite me i think that's what happened no oh i just I, I love ed rouse so much like all reading about him and he was a good player too i mean really really good you couldn't get him out back in the day but just oh the 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 aura and the history and the stories surrounding that guy was just absolutely phenomenal all right so then that leaves us right field which means you know who I'm taking because we talked about this the other day when you tried to fit him at third base. It's Frank Robinson, the best red. I've said it before, the best red. And again, this is favorites and stuff like that. But he's one of my favorites, but he's also the best red that ever played. Frank Robinson. Well, he's an old right 30, field. Jeff. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what a terrible trade. trade. <laughs> terrible. Oh my God. Oh. And that's the thing too. Like you don't hear people talking about age nowadays. They don't say, well, he's an old 30 when they trade. They're just like, no, 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 no. We gotta, we gotta uh, rebuild and load up on prospects because it's a lot harder to like distinguish who's stupid when you say stuff like that. <laughs> so for my right fielder following, it has to be somebody that I met. I'm struggling a little bit. To, to get a right, a true right fielder. Um, I'm going to just select another outfielder and hope that somewhere along the way he played maybe for a minute in right field. So it's going to have to be Billy Hatcher because that's the only other outfielder I've met. Um, so, so Billy Hatcher is shifting over and playing right field for me. If we get to the world series, he's going to hit for average. <laughs> yes, he will. He's proven he can do that. And that leaves us now on the mound. Who are you taking? Oh, I wish I hadn't imposed this silly somebody that I have met rule because the only starting pitcher that I have ever met is Norm Charlton. So I'm throwing a lefty. <laughs> I like it. Norm Charlton. And I'm going to, I'm going to reach back here too, because this isn't, I, I think you can make an argument that he's been one of the best Reds pitchers of the last 20 years easily. I don't know about all time, all time. He's probably top 10, but he's my pitcher and he's been on the show multiple times. He's Bronson Arroyo. I'm taking Bronson. We're going to get at least seven out of him. He's going to keep it close for this lineup of just mashers and Ed Roush and Heine grow and Ernie Lombardi. And they're going to take this thing all the way, baby. Wow. <laughs> All right. That was fun. That was fun. I, I'm, 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 that was fun. I, I'm glad we did that. That was, we probably could have turned that into the whole episode. I was like it, segment three, this will be a lot of fun. And then this turned out, yeah, to, be turned out to be a whole thing. Segment. Thanks for hanging in there with us, everybody. Jeff and I needed a minute to decompress and do something fun. We appreciate you. <laughs> There's going to be plenty of stuff like this moving on the rest of the season. We've got a lot of fun stuff planned for you. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss anything that we've got coming for you. Thanks again for checking out Locked On Reds today. Now go check out Locked On MLB as Sully's got you covered with unique takes and humor perspective around the league. I know he's got some thoughts about the field of dreams. You're going to want to check it out. Locked On MLB is just like Locked On Reds, free and available on all platforms. Like we said, coming up next week, plenty of content where you're talking about the daily reds and what's going on. We'll have a crossover with the locked on Cubs guys to break down the series. We'll see all of you then Steve, when it comes to all of the craziness that everybody is looking at for the rest of this red season, what can they expect from you and me? They can expect you and I to continue to point out what's good, what's not, what's exciting, and where we head from here. Because you and I, we're locked on Reds every single day.